During this video, I'm going to show you how to use the Chart Plus web part to chart some data that's stored in an out-of-the-box SharePoint issues list. I'm showing you this in SharePoint 2013, but the Chart Plus is also available in SharePoint 2010 and also Moss. So first, a little bit of background. Here's my issues list. Um, you can see I have, uh, it's the out-of-the-box uh, issues list. The only thing I've changed is the values in the category column. So the category column I'm using to represent the departments in my organization. So you can see all these issues are uh, assigned or uh, associated with a certain department, and they have a status and a priority and a due date. Um, I created a chart in Excel, and this is what I want to see in SharePoint. So across the x-axis, the department, uh, the y shows um, numbers, and then the stacked bars, the portions, represent the number of issues of each particular issue status, so close, resolved, and active. Um, so the first thing I did was I added a chart plus web part to a page. And uh, this is the page. So first I want to show you some uh, default behavior with the chart plus. So I'm going to edit the page and then edit the web part. <coughs> As I scroll to the right, you'll see the web part tool pane. I'm going to click on chart plus web part settings. And I'm going to click over here uh, to data source settings. You can see I can display uh, data from several different types of sources in my chart plus. I'm going to choose uh, list or library, which is the default, and then click on list or library on the left hand side. Then I need to choose my list. So my list is the issues list. The view that I want to display is all issues. So when you choose the view, you need to make sure it has a filter that gets all the data that you want to chart and also the columns uh, of the data that you want to chart. So the x-axis, um, I want to display my category, which is where I store my department name. And then you'll notice um, on the available columns, I only have one column available, which is kind of strange because I had several more columns in my view. But uh, let's just pick that available column, move it to the right, and then I'm going to click Preview. And this will show me a preview of my chart so far. So you can see I can very easily get a bar chart showing me um, the departments in the x-axis and the number of issues in the y. But that's not quite what I want. I want to be able to show a stacked bar that differentiates the issue status. So. Um, I'm going to have to make a few manipulations with my list in order to do that because I don't see information about the status in the available columns. So let's go ahead and cancel this for a moment. We'll come back to it. So first I need to go to my issues list and I need to make a few changes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a couple of calculated columns that uh, indicate the status of a particular item. So calculated columns, they don't get in the way of people entering information about issues. They're kind of calculated automatically and they show up in views if you want them to. So I'm going to go to the list ribbon and go to list settings and I'm going to add a column for each status value. So uh, under create column I'm going to say this is going to be for the closed status. It's going to be a calculated column. And down here, the calculation is going to be if um, issue status equals closed. I want this value to be 1, otherwise it's going to be 0. And I'm going to store it as a number. It's important to have number values uh, for display in a chart. Um, so I'm going to just copy that since I need to make two more. Click OK. Um, we can go take a look at our uh, all items view. 
and we'll see that uh, that column shows a 1 for the things that have a status of closed and a 0 for everything else. So that's what I want. So let's go back and add the two other calculated columns. Uh, one is going to be for resolved calculated. I'll paste this in here and um, I'm just going to change this to resolved. Make sure it's a number. Click OK. And then I'm going to create the third one, which will be active. Calculated. Paste in my formula. Just change this to active. Change it to a number. Click OK. So let's verify that those columns have what we want. So there's resolve. There's just two that are resolved and active, 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 active. So that looks good. So now let's go back to our chart page. Edit that page again. Edit the web part. Scroll over to the right and click on chart plus web part settings. Um, I'm going to give the chart a title while I'm on this page. Is issue status by department. I'm going to go over to SharePoint Lister Library. I'm going to choose my issues list. I'm going to choose my view name, all issues. The x cat is uh, the x-axis is going to show category. And now you can see, in addition to due date, I have those three new calculated columns. And the reason they show up is because I stored them as a number. If I stored them as text, they would not show up. So I'm going to choose all three of those and move them to the right. Then I'm going to come over here and click on Chart Data Settings. And you can see that um, I'm summing those values, which is OK. I could also count them. That uh, would probably well, well, actually, no, I can't count because uh, that would show me the total number. I want to sum because um, only the things that are zero will apply to the sum. Um, let's go ahead and preview and see what that looks like. So now we can see that um, I do have values. I have active, closed, and resolved. Um, but by default, that is a regular bar chart. And uh, I wanted the stacked bar. I also see some things. I don't like the location of the legend. I want to move it over to the right. I have a, a secondary Y axis that I don't need. So there are a few things uh, that I want to clean up. Uh, so first, uh, I want to change the chart type from bar to stacked bar. And then I don't really like the colors that they picked, so I'm going to use custom colors. And so for active issues, I'm going to make those green. For closed, I'm going to make those blue. And for resolved, I'm going to make those that reddish color. So it's kind of the same colors that we had before. Um, let's go take a preview of that now. So now it's starting to um, look uh, like what I want. Um, I, I show the numbers here, and I probably um, don't need to do that. Uh, so let's, uh, while we're on the chart data settings, I'm going to turn the series data labels off. <coughs> um, the next thing I'm going to do is go to Y axis settings and uncheck this show secondary Y axis. Um, I'm going to go to Legend Settings and say I want the legend location on the right-hand side. Um, I can choose aliases uh, for my uh, series names, but those are okay for me. On the x-axis, um, I can add a uh, title to this department. Um, and let's take a preview of that and see if we forgot anything. 
So there we go, we see um, my x-axis, my y-axis, my legend over there. So I think that looks fine. So I'm going to go ahead and save this chart setting. And then uh, over on the tool pane, uh, if you look over here, our web part has a title by default. Since I created the title within my chart, I don't want to show the title of the web part. So I'm going to go up to Appearance and change the Chrome type to None. Now I'm going to click Apply. And we should see our chart over here. Looks good. Now I'm going to click OK. And choose to stop editing this page. And uh, there we have Issue Status by Department.